in this river we have an, an incredibly large amount of potential spawning area. And there's huge opportunities for hapu and iwi and the community here to make a real difference for, for Atutahi. A tēnā tātou, ko Hana Rain for tōku ingoa, he uri au no tēnei awa, no te awa Wanganui, o te rā, no te awa Wangau, me te awa Rangi Tekei Oki, a nā reira, e, e uri tēnei no ngā Pairangi, no ngā Te Awati, no ngā Te Rangi e ma inei ki tātou. Atutahi are one of the white bait species. For us in Wanganui, we call the adult the Atutahi, and we call the juvenile the Karoi. Other iwi call them Inanga. We've got kōrero about standing on the hill opposite our marae, and looking downstream to watch for when the shoals of, of juveniles, so the karohi, were coming up. And the kōrero is that those shoals were so big that the water went black. Now when you go white batting, you know, you're lucky to get enough for a couple of fritters. There could be more atutahi and more white bait if we look after this spawning area. Where we're standing right now is the area that atutahi adults come to spawn. They'll migrate all the way back downstream to this zone. For a few days before the king tide, they'll get together in big shoals and they'll test out the vegetation. It's something that has gently sloped banks, no shading overhead, thick ground cover vegetation. Basically when the roots of the plants have grown together over the soil and they form this nice little cushion for the eggs to sit on and stay nice and moist. They'll come right in and amongst all these grasses, push their way through into about a centimetre of water and then they'll lay their eggs on that and then the tide goes out and leaves those eggs out of the water for, for anywhere between two and six weeks. And what happens is when the next big tide comes up and inundates them again, that's when they'll hatch and then they'll go out to sea for three months and then they come back as whitebait. Unfortunately what we've found when we've looked at this potential area is that less than 1% of the entire area that we surveyed was what we would consider to be good condition, excellent condition spawning habitat. We need to get rid of the willows because what the willows do is they make the banks steeper and they also shade out the grass underneath. And so under willows you'll just find mud basically. We need to keep stock out because what stock do obviously is they eat the grass down and they stomp on eggs and stop mowing. Those are the key things. For me, a goal of restoration and conservation is to be able to have enough karo'i coming up the awa that we can take them knowing that there's a plentiful supply, not just for us but for the awa herself. Through restoring this spawning habitat we can reconnect with a really important species and with our hour.